Coming soon to theaters. <laughs> I'm, I'm rolling. We're jumping into it. Okay. okay. What are we calling this? I mean, nonsense at the movies sort of works. I, th- no. I think we, we should think about it some more, though. No. We're going with it. It's now or never. Space balls, the now or never. Space balls of the flamethrower. <laughs> Space balls of the toilet paper. That's Space probably real. <laughs> That's probably real. All those things you just named, I mean, except the flamethrower. I know that's the joke in the movie, but it's probably real. No, it is real now. The flamethrower? Yes, it is real. No. <laughs> no, I can look it up. It is real. Anyway, th- this episode of the podcast should be called Spaceballs the Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely do that. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Round of applause. Now I have space balls in my search history. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I, There's not a space between space and balls. You should, you should um, look up space balls as a porn. I'm sure space that balls. Exists. Space w- balls. Something. I don't know. I want to look. I, I, I want that to exist because uh, Bill Pullman is in this movie. Bill Pullman's <laughs> from my hometown mm. and uh, we love Bill Pullman. <laughs> we all love Bill Pullman. So maybe we should actually talk about it. <laughs> yep, you can buy it on Redbubble. The flamethrower. Yes. How much oh, is it? T-shirt. I don't know. I just saw the advertisement for Red it. Redbubble on... sells t-shirts. You're sort of making me go at hyper, at ludicrous speed here. Oh my god. He's crushing it. He's crushing it with the jokes. Yeah. You're crushing it. I know. So Nick, yeah. I want you to give me your, your, your detailed analysis of this film <laughs> for at least 20 minutes. Detailed analysis of space. Yes. I, yeah. Okay, well, I actually do kind of have a topic okay. on how, like, this film is both completely irrelevant and more relevant than ever at the exact same time. All right. Yeah. Hit me with it. All right. So the whole thing is, like, satire's Star Wars and the fact that it's, like, the biggest cash cow in the entire fucking universe. You know? And it's, like... On one hand, that'll always be relevant because Star Wars is always relevant. But on the other hand, it's not relevant anymore because like so much more Star Wars related shit has come out since then that like nothing in this film could possibly even scratch the surface of what the absolute ridiculousness that is out there. Like so what you're saying is this movie is is funny in, in large part because it is true. Yes. <laughs> More or less, I guess. It's true because it's funny. Yeah. Right. What? <laughs> the other way around. It's funny because it's true. It's just a dumb joke. Oh, okay. I didn't get it. It went over my head. Well, no, but you know how the, the common joke goes. It's funny because it's true. Uh huh. It's true because it's funny. You're explaining a joke? Yes. And that means the joke is not funny. (laughs) I thought you were a fan of Batman TSA. You should know that, Alex. Um, And you bring up a good... But you touched on something a little. Parody. This movie is a parody of of Star Wars, but also just sci-fi films in general. Yes. And I judge a parody a lot a lot of the times by can it stand on its own two feet? Do you need to know the source material? And I'd say for a good majority of the film, no, you don't need to know. It's funny by itself. Would you would you tend to agree? I think a lot of it is funny by itself, yes. 
I, I don't, it's not one of my favorite Mel Brooks movies. What's your favorite Mel Brooks movie? Uh, I mean, I like Young Frankenstein a lot better. Okay, is that your favorite Mel Brooks movie, though? I don't know. I, I have to think about it. You just don't want to say Blazing Saddles. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> you just, we all know it's your favorite. No, we all I, know that it's everybody's I, favorite. Where, you don't where's the it. white woman at? <laughs> you just don't want to say it. Anyway. Actually, I probably prefer Young Frankenstein, but anyway. Blazing Saddles is way funnier. Keep going. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought because you're, you're derailing me with your mm-hmm. uh, your thing. But um, I think, uh, you know, there certainly are parts of it that would be confusing if you hadn't seen Star Wars. Uh, like what? I mean, the, the concept of the Schwartz. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, they explain it enough to um, understand in the context of the film, I feel like. But then they also very much throw it away as a, that shit doesn't matter because he loses the ring. He's like, ah, I got that in a Cracker Jack box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I guess that, that also makes me wonder how did Dark Helmet use the Force? If and he had the ring, but the ring didn't mean anything. So, but he just, I guess he had the force and the Schwartz inside of him too. Yeah. It's, yeah. Every, it's, it, yeah. Okay. it's a mental I mean, thing. You know? Right. No, no, no. It's a biological thing. He has midichlorians. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Yeah>. Why? <laughs> but Why? anyways, it's. It, I guess I, I figured that for you to, to ha- you know, use it without the ring, you'd have to know you have it kind of thing like Lone Star did. Maybe, maybe it's that. You'd have to believe you have it. You know. Well, maybe that's what Dark Helmet. Maybe that's just how he feels. He just maybe he has it. Yeah. Why are we? Talking or maybe it about, doesn't. Like, maybe it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> why are we talking about something that's basically just a dick joke in the context of the movie? I think it's an important dick joke. <laughs> it is because one of the central themes of the movie is a dick joke. It's one of the central themes of Mel Brooks is dick joke. Dick jokes. Yes. Yeah. And. Um, I love that. Dick jokes in Yiddish. <laughs> All right, you want to hear something um, really, uh, really film schooly, but sure. yeah, but maybe a good, maybe a good point. Um, the opening shot of Star Wars is very iconic, the, the yes. original, and it sets up um, Empire bad, um, rebellion good. These guys are so much bigger than these guys just because of the framing of the shot and the size of the ships and the models that they use. It gives you this tone and it sets up the tone of the universe throughout the series. Would you, I mean, right? Yes, I'd agree. This movie does the same thing. <laughs> Except <laughs> it sets the tone of the movie right off the bat by having that sh- ship be so ludicrous. <laughs> so ludicrous in how big it is that it, it, and it's one of the, it, it's one of my favorite gags in the yeah. whole movie and it's yeah. right out of the gate and it just sets up you know exactly what you're in for right from the, the get-go the thing that kills me is like when the ship reaches the end and it just has this fucking license plate on it yeah mel brooks in the visual gag it's a like uh, break for nobody yeah. yeah, we break for no. <laughs> Mel Brooks and the visual gag is a is a whole thing. He's, yes, I mean he's known for it, but I mean the dialogue in these movies also very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, my 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 favorite line in the movie is <laughs> when they're combing the desert, <laughs> and he's like, "You think we're taking this too literally?" And then the subsequent, we ain't found shit. (laughs) What's your, Nick Forge, what's your favorite scene in the movie? Okay, well, I'm going to start with that and then I'm going to go off on a tangent. Okay, great. But like probably my favorite scene in the movie is is just the the one where he's like playing with his dolls alone in his... (laughs) Because it's like, and this ties in to what I'm saying here. One of the biggest jokes in this movie is that the Darth Vader analog is a complete fucking loser. You know? Like, 
like you were talking about like they predicted um, Anakin Skywalker no but like Tom and you were talking about like you don't need the context to like get the jokes here but like this is something that like if you do know the context it because it's so much fucking funnier because it's like the badass Sith Lord is just Rick Moranis with a giant knob head on his on his person right well I, I guess more what I was saying was that you don't you don't need um the context to understand a lot of the jokes and for the movie to be funny but what separates this from it, it, it enhances it if you do right but what yeah. separates yeah, I mean, this, like any parody it, it's enhanced if you've seen what it's parodying right but what separates this a movie a parody like this like space balls from a parody like the later scary movie movies is but that ones. see i like three and four better than one and two that's a whole different conversation for four were written oh, by the guys who wrote a Air whole Air. different conversation for another day i don't <laughs> i don't need your bullshit right now <laughs> but but what separates that from the latest scary movies is you don't need to um you don't need to have seen those movies to understand and think they're funny whereas something like scary movie three Indeed. Remember when Scary Movie made a Kung Fu Panda joke? No. I fucking don't. <laughs> no. That, see, I, I basically, I that is the only sure thing I've ever remembered from a Scary Movie. That first the Scary Movie movie. Uh, my good. favorite part of, I think it was four, um, it was the one that was the War of the Worlds parody, is when um, the main character meets his ex wife. And uh, it's a parody of the line in War of the Worlds where he says, pregnant's a good look for you. And she goes, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> um, well, anyway. that movie is probably, <laughs> I haven't seen that movie in so long. But back to the topic at hand, Alex. Yes. Back to the topic at Wait, hand. Wait, can I say my favorite scene in Spaceballs? Fuck no, Alex. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I, I love the part where they're watching the movie of the movie. Yes. Yes. Where they're like, what's going on? This is this is now, you know, and uh, they're like, they're fast forwarding through the stuff. Or, and then, uh, you know, where Cohen's like, yeah, fast forward through all that. And he hits the thing. I, just, I liked how that scene ends where he's just like, whoo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I also, I liked when they panned over the, the collection of movies. They had all the Mel Brooks movies. And then they had like Rocky, like fifty. Yeah, <laughs> Rocky <laughs> had like dozens of Rocky movies. I love that. We need more Rocky movies. Are we gonna talk about all the Rocky movies on this I podcast? Oh God, maybe I'd have to like see them again. And I really don't want to see the later Rocky movies, man. Oh, dude, Rocky Five's the best one. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather watch a snuff film than I would the later Rocky sequels. You know they're recutting Rocky IV. Dude, I'm I'm one hundred percent serious. They're... Why? Sylvester Stallone was pissed uh, about the original cut of it, I guess, and he's recutting it himself. Well, I'd be pissed about the original cut too, honestly. And they're getting rid of the robot. Yes. Oh, my. So, see, you know. <laughs> you know. They're getting rid of the scene with the robot, which that That's robot... I know about that movie. <laughs> which that robot is great. <laughs> Your robot's great. Say it. I, I haven't seen the movie, so I can't you're, say you're Alex, holding me at gunpoint. Say it. It. Good job. <laughs> Good job. You crushed it. You crushed it. Yeah. So... One thing I think is interesting is how they combined the characters of Luke Skywalker and Han Solo into uh, into one it? person. Yeah, one person. yeah, that is interesting. You know, he does marry the princess at the end. If it is the Luke Skywalker character, that's odd. Yeah, I mean, it's it's they never dissuade from the fact that maybe like their royal families were involved at one point. If you get where I'm going here. 
well, all royal families were involved at one point, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Look at the fucking British monarch. These guys are fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I can't really add to that. I'm gonna let the uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna let the air be dead. Somebody somebody say something. Okay, uh, I'll say something. Like I think that the reason they're combined is again it's an in joke. It's po- poking fun at the fact that Han Solo is just so much more popular than Luke Skywalker. You know, because you know everyone loves a bad boy in Harrison Ford and. Let's be real here. Mark Hamill only became a good actor when he did things after Star Wars. And uh, that's why when he comes back in The Last Jedi, that's his best Star Wars role. And you can go fuck yourself. Oh, I completely agree. Did you say something? (laughs) I mean, you're right. (laughs) When he did voice work as the Joker and stuff like that. I mean, you're, you're correct. But did you just say something good about The Last Jedi? Oh, yeah, I did. And I'll say it again, you fuckers. Oh, yeah. speak your mind. Pre- you know what? No, don't preach. Yeah, I'll speak my mind. It's my no. favorite Star Wars movie. Okay, well, now we have to do a whole thing on that. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, already, yeah, sure. I mean, tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> tune in next week when we uh, get political about Star Wars. Oh, my God. Yes. We're going to get political? Are yeah, it's like yeah, how basically all the people who hate the Last Jedi are like you know right wing anti feminist you know Nazis. Oh my god! <laughs> I want I don't know if I'd go that far, but okay. <laughs> they did bully what's her name off the internet. Anyway, well, I'd say like more of the vocal ones are like that. There are some reasonable people who dislike it, but you know though. But again, you know, just like the, vocal. the fandom menace portion of the fan base are. Yeah, let's are, put it that way. I was going to make a joke about the Star Wars prequels when I mentioned Star Wars and politics, but it just sort of fell off. That Palpatine, the, that George Bush stand-in? No, because, no, because there's like way too many Vader, scenes in the Star Wars prequels. Say all that again. You guys were talking over each other. Nick first, Alex second. Here we go. Ready? There's, there's way too many like senate scenes in the star wars prequels and like absolutely nobody has any idea what the fuck is going on in those movies right alex you're okay turn. uh george lucas said that darth vader is george bush dick cheney is the emperor when, the, when i mean because like dick cheney was like the the man behind the, the man, scenes I mean, I mean that's it that just doesn't make any sense that palpatine didn't ever blew somebody's head off at hunting geese Yeah. Yeah. And then make them apologize for it. Wait, did that happen? Yes. <laughs> did that part well, happen? Yes. Basically, <laughs> the king made the guy he shot apologize for getting in his way. Oh God. That really happened. Nice. I've yeah. created a monster here, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I'm voice. I'm sorry. My- you're sorry you mentioned The Last Jedi. Look what happens. Yeah. Look what happens. Yeah. Uh, space bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Mel Brooks. He's the man in it. Plays both two roles of yep. uh, opposite the opposite sides of uh, a conflict. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he kills it in both. Yeah, it's good. Um, also, going back to the combining Han Solo and Luke Skywalker thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's that smart. I don't know if that they cared that much. I think they just needed a protagonist. Yeah. And we're like, we'll just, we'll just go with this. It, it simplified things, obviously. I mean, because it's not meant to be a trilogy. So it's, it's just sort of like, let's just have the main character. Right. I, I do wish they, they, they wound up making Spaceballs 2 the quest for more money, but... Yes. Uh, but... Uh, they uh, can't because the guy who played Barf is dead. He... Yes. Yeah. Uh, Rip John Candy. Yeah. A, 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 an absolute class act and talent. <sighs> Unfortunate. Unfortunately passed, but... 
you know, we mu we must move on. There is a Space Files animated series. Did you know that? Yeah, I, it's I, I garbage. Think, yeah, I haven't seen it. But... Nick, do do tell. It's it's like imagine like oh my god. Okay, so like none of the original cast come back. I think so. You know that's strike one, and like yeah, strike. Why would they? They were all doing shit by then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like strike two is the fact that like just just like it has completely different writers, you know, and it's like it doesn't have the self awareness of the original as like being a parody of consumerism. And that sort of thing. It's just like, okay, well, this was successful, so let's make some more shit and like put no thought into it. And that's like the problem with it. Is it almost a? Is it almost contradictory to what the original was saying, and that they need say to, to cash in on money? It, it's completely contradictory, because it's like, it's not. It's not like. It's just not funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's that's the part that's contradictory. It's, it's, they didn't. It wasn't funny. <laughs> well, you know, I was trying to be smart about it at first, but then I just wanted to be like, what "You're saying, niggas, it's like one of yogurt's cash-in products." Yeah, I'm gonna look you know, up reviews for Spaceballs, the animated series. You talk amongst yourself. <laughs> okay. You know, it's like you know that one like robot chicken star wars spinoff that like george lucas was working on for a while that thing that never got made because disney bought it and was like no this is fucking stupid no i didn't know that was a thing but awesome <laughs> space well, the animated series has a 4.4 on imdb <laughs> well it's basically like this is to space balls what like that would have been the Star Wars, just like completely brainless, unfunny humor. So, like the prequels. No, the, no, the prequels are hilarious. Newt Gunray, funniest fucking character in the entire Star Wars universe. Oh my God! Racist stereotype. Hilarious. Mel Brooks does it again. I'm looking for good reviews. <laughs> I have to say, I was iffy about a Spaceballs cartoon, much less a Flash one at that. But, oh my god, it's made in Flash. <laughs> Nobody mentioned that. Nobody told, said that. They animated the TV show in fucking Flash. That's crazy. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I love the original film and hope that the series is laying the groundwork for Space Falls to the quest for more money. I like the fact that the series parodies more than just Star Wars. The movie did that, but okay. <laughs> Though it still does see the return of the Sithy. If I, if you doubt it, but it works, I, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> English is not that man's first language. <laughs> I, am, I am disappointed that the show didn't get enough publicity. I just found out that it was actually, that it was made after reading rumors about a new movie slash cartoon for years. Good stuff. It's great to see Mel Brooks still has it. Keep it up. I don't think Mel Brooks had anything to do with this. No, he didn't. It says Mel Brooks is Spaceballs, but I, I, I don't believe. Because he owns the frog. Fuck, yeah, he did. He totally did. <laughs> Wait, what? He's in it. He's in it? Yeah. He he voices President Scrooge or whatever the fuck and yogurt. He's I like in it. Uh, and Scrooge at the end is like, I can't make decisions. I'm a president. <laughs> <laughs> timely. Yes. <laughs> it also I also thought it was timely was the uh Dark Helmet says, like, and now you see why you always wins because good is dumb. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that that's my favorite good. line. <laughs> that's, I take it back. <sighs> it takes me back to the days when, like, confused Matthew was a thing and he would, like, close out his reviews with that sometimes. Who's confused Matthew? Yeah. You're oh, he, was, he was, like, a reviewer that was famous for, like, hating the Lion King. 
Really? Yeah. Wow. Who hates the Lion King? Do you hate the Lion King? You seem like the kind of fuck that would hate the Lion King. I like <laughs> Lion King. Confused Matthews, the one who hates the Lion King. Alex, do you like the Lion King? Yes, it's one of Disney's best. It's a good answer. Would you have <laughs> fucking killed him if he... <laughs> I don't him? know. Listen, sometimes I throw things out there that are pretty, like, common opinions. And you guys are contrarians. <laughs> I'm not a contrarian. I just have I think, I think good you are, taste Nick. I think media. I just have some different opinions. Oh, you. bitch, Alex, you're a contrarian too. Don't come at me with that shit. You just said <laughs> you just said fucking scream or not scream. Fucking scary movies three and four are better than the first two. They are. They're written by the guys who wrote Airplane. Those are funny guys, and they have Leslie Nielsen. You can't beat Leslie Nielsen. I don't. Scary. I haven't seen enough scary movie to debate this point. Listen, I'm now. I'm gonna look up the scary movie franchise, <laughs> and we're gonna see what's the highest rated. It doesn't matter what the highest rated is. Reviewers can be stupid. Listen, but anyway, that's con- what you just said. Contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know one of the? <laughs> you want to talk about contrarian? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. Let's let me think. Well, let's let me think of actually one of my contrarian opinions. Okay. Scary movie. The original has a six point uh, nine. Is this user reviews Two. or critic reviews? It's critic reviews. Okay. I don't know. Fuck. It's IMDb. Who cares? I'll okay. I'll go on my IMDb because I don't trust your IMDb. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> it's the same <laughs> website. Five point three. Scary movie two. Scary movie three. I, just, I I thought I thought of a contrarian. Forty eight of uh, critic reviews. Second one is a twenty nine critic reviews. Five point five scary movie three. Slightly better than slightly better than a uh, two. Five point one scary movie. They're all consistently five, except I think five, which is probably awful. Yes, five was awful. Um, three point five. Okay, so we've established that one all the scary movie movies are garbage and <laughs> they have some funny jokes man they, you know you, you can't beat leslie nielsen his scenes are great say what you will about the rest of those movies but his scenes in those movies are gold we're gonna talk about all the scary he movies plays now. the president i've seen scary movies <laughs> yeah we're gonna talk and it's about like it. and it's like we thought like that was a parody of a president but then you know look what we have now we're all gonna we're all gonna we're gonna talk about all the scary movies now and this is your fucking faults and <laughs> thanks alex now i have to watch the scary movie franchise. you you do have to watch the scary movie franchise there's five so get ready give me your contrarian opinion okay so i think i've already said this once you guys probably know this but the audience doesn't i like andrew garfield as spider-man better than toby mcguire yeah, I am allowed my opinions, Thomas Hazer <laughs> Clark. Fuck you. <laughs> well, if you insist. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you know. I'm trying to think if I have it. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting towards the end and we're done talking about space balls. I'm you to... strike me as a guy who would have contrarian opinions, Tom. Yeah. Everyone fucking has contrarian opinions. That's what not what I... Notice? Listen, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that you guys have more than I think the average Joe Schmo. I, I don't know what to fucking tell you. <laughs> contrarian opinion. Oh, I have I have some about the I'm talking about the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, and oh, yeah. I, I I have some with uh with that. I I think they only get better as they go. <laughs> I, I I think that shit gets so good. <laughs> it's because yeah. as they go on, they get more self aware as to how stupid they are. Yes, yes exactly. So seriously, yeah. exactly. We got ten minutes left. Yeah, we could probably cut it off before that. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you straight up right now. 
I'll give you. It almost fell. I'll give you. What the fuck? The best Friday the Thirteenth movie is part fucking savage. <laughs> Part seven, mm-hmm. maybe. And part seven is when he fights a telepath. <laughs> and uh, it, it's pretty much Jason versus Carrie, and it's fucking awesome. <laughs> and then when New Line took over, there's there's this whole documentary I've watched, like a YouTube documentary called How <laughs> New Line Cinema Destroyed Friday the 13th. I disagree. <laughs> they, they, that was a breath of fresh air. So Jason goes to hell while fucking stupid and not a Friday the 13th movie. Super fun. Jason X, how very stupid. <laughs> and in space, also very fun. Like, how could you not hear Jason in space and think, oh, okay, this is what I'm getting into? Oh, exactly. Have you guys seen a movie? It's called Behind the Mask: The Rise of Leslie Vernon. I have, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a great interesting. movie. That's a good movie. I love that movie. That's a but, movie. See, I was expecting something to be. You know how um, at the end she ends up killing him. Well, Spo- then he comes back. Spoilers. Well, okay, spoilers. What it's it's a slasher movie. The, the villain dies and then comes back. I, I um, feel, okay, keep going. I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna let you finish. I'm I, gonna let you finish. <laughs> But, 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 you know, I don't remember the Kanye quote, anyway. Um, but basically, I thought that the twist was, you know, she, the, she was a virgin character, that she was going to have sex with him. What That's is what this, Hocus thought. Pocus? That's what you thought the fucking twist, the twist was going to be. That, like, you know, that, like, instead of her killing him or vice versa, that, you know, that, that's how they'd, they'd work it out, quote, unquote. Maybe if we get a behind the mask too, but we will never will. So no. unfortunately, because that is a good movie. Uh, I feel like a smart movie. I feel like it needs more credit than it's given. It's a it's an interesting deconstruction of the. Oh, here's another contrary opinion. <laughs> found footage, great. <laughs> yes, same here. I love found footage horror. Found footage, great. It's love it. It Give is, me more of it. I don't yes. fucking care. Yes. I, I would probably like it more if, like, I don't know. Because I feel like my biggest problem with horror in general is, like, annoying main characters. Where it's like, if you're just a fucking high school cliche who I want to watch die, wh- why should I give a shit? Unless, unless you're, like, you know, self-aware about it. But a lot of them aren't self-aware. You're... You're missing the point <laughs> in that we don't it's like them. Great. We don't like them, so we want to see them die. So it's okay when they die in horrific and awesome fashions. <laughs> yeah, but they're not even like interesting douchebags. They're just like what people on Reddit think other people are like type of douchebags. But, but if they're interesting, then you'd feel bad when they die. Right. Um Leslie Vernon, uh, for the behind the mask, I feel like is an example of that because, like, I like the people in that. Yes. You know, so, um, still a great movie, still a great movie, and um, sounded like Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> still a great movie. Still, uh, still one still of the great. best. One, one of the best. best. <laughs> one of the best. Yeah. Um, My friend directed that movie. <laughs> They wanted to make a sequel, but they wanted to make it in China. <laughs> so we said no. <laughs> no. No sequel. No shitty live action remakes. <laughs> that would be if, if somebody came in here and was like, I like the Disney live action remakes better than the originals. That would be country. I want to get someone in here that feels that way. I will kill someone if you do that. I, I want to I wanna find them. I know that you're particularly fond of animation so yeah i want to get them alex is that person you <laughs> no i haven't seen any of the new live action remakes <sighs> it's alex alex you're disappointing me yeah. what i need you to they pull... haven't seen a bunch of shitty movies yes i need you to pull your fucking weight <laughs> nick's pulling his weight <laughs> where are you i'm playing video games right now no 
Well, I mean, Doom Eternal is paused, yes, but because if you're if you're playing video games while you're talking to me, I'm gonna be upset. I'm not playing currently, as I said, it is paused. I mean, it's you know. Is it on? It on, yes. It's the same thing. <laughs> Alex, are you secretly a VTuber? What's VTube? See, that's another thing to do. <laughs> you, you make references that are too they're too niche and, and nobody can sure. tell. <laughs> Ugh, whatever. What what is that? Yeah, you don't that? oh, you don't know either? No. <laughs> oh, okay. So like virtual no, fuck what I know what that is. What is that? It's like virtual fucking YouTubers. They like have weird CGI avatars and they're like, what's oh. up? Yeah, you know, I do know what that is. I didn't know there was a term for it. Yeah, I always see. I always, <laughs> I always see. Um, they do like the uh, the anime girl ones where it's like just a computer. It's like purely a computer. There's yeah. no one behind it, so it's just like generative. And every time they play GTA, they say the N word. <laughs> oh yeah, because they don't know. Because they don't know. Yeah. Because they're from Japan, right? At some point, because because it's a computer, <laughs> you know. Well, it's it's a computer image, but it's like simulating a real person playing the the real person playing the game. Is that how it works? Yeah. So it's like what, did, AI did you think it? they were like fucking AI? Oh, I thought, well, playing. yeah, yeah. Oh, bitch! There's fucking. No, well, okay, yes. I, I understand that they're not playing the game. <laughs> but I, I more thought that it was like they had this avatar and the, uh, like, it was top. I don't know, dude. They, 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 that shit's real. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't even really know what we're talking about here, so I can't. Okay. That's fine. We're, we're running out of time. Are we going to start a new one or? No, probably not. It's, okay. It's, it's it's fine. You want you want to wrap up? Give your final thoughts on space balls. Anyway, I like that they got John Hurt to do a cameo as his character from Alien. That was another one of my favorite little bits. <laughs> That's your final thoughts on it? <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that while we're talking about space balls. So they have the chest burster come out and then sing a "Hello, my honey, hello, my darling, hello, my good time gal." That fucking killed me the first time. Yeah, I that was it. I was I was laughing my ass off. Nick, final thoughts. On the movie? Yeah. Just in general? Okay. Yeah. So final thoughts on the movie. Uh, I think what makes it so funny isn't just that, like, it's a satire of Star Wars, but also because it is, like, it's juvenile, but in, like, a charming way, you know? Yeah, I, I feel that. Yeah. And uh, bouncing off that, Spaceballs, great movie starring Bill Pullman, hometown hero. Very funny. Um, watch it. And thank you for joining Alex. Nick, thank you for being here. We should become VTubers. No. Way.